Hello three. I hope you're all well. So welcome to our Friday afternoon lesson and we're going to continue with our RE learning. So this is just a quick recap. Um, this stuff is already that we know already and then we'll go on to our new learning today. So Hinduism is the world's third most popular religion. It has around 750 million follower, followers. The religion of Hinduism originated in northern India. Now, we live in England, so we live here. Oops, there. So we live around about here. India is this country here, and it, it originated from the Indus River, so in the northern parts of India, parts of Pakistan, and parts of Nepal and other countries there. So near the river Indus around 4,000 years ago and is the world's oldest religion. Hinduism is practiced by 80% of India's population. So 80% of the Indian population follow this religion. And if you can remember this sign, this is the Om sign, which is like a symbol of Hinduism. So let's move on. So last, last lesson, we had a look at the three main um, ideas of Hinduism. So we've got the Dharma, and this is basically about Hindus following the right way of living, making sure that they follow the law, that they're making good choices, that they're being nice to as many people as they can. And they take these, they take these rules very seriously because this all links into the next one that we have, which is reincarnation reincarnation so they believe so hindus believe that once we die our soul the soul is the thing that makes us us will go will be reborn into something else now if you leave not a very good life and you make bad choices and you don't follow the law and make you know just very bad bad, bad choices they believe that your soul will cut to, will go into an animal that is suitable for that so say if you've had a really bad life you might and when you die your soul will go into something that is not very nice so maybe like a rat or an insect or anything like that but if you continue to make good choices throughout your lives you will be able to move on to something that is better and nicer which then goes on to our next thing which is moksha so the whole point of reincarnation is to be able to break the chain of reincarnation so they can reach moksha, which basically means that they are able to be one with God. And they're able to stop living this reincarnation of going life, going through rebirth, life and death. It's quite a hard concept. But basically, Hindus believe that you've got to live a good life. And then when you die, your soul is goes into an, either another human or into an animal and they their ultimate goal is to be able to be liberated from that life to make sure that they're free from that life and to be one with their god now if you remember they believed hindus believe in lots of different gods and we're going to go into that in a minute so here is our success criteria and our learning objective. So here's our learning objective. I can explain the main beliefs uh, of Hindu gods. I know that Hindus believe in many different gods. I know the three most important gods are Brahman, Shiva and Vishnu. Now we talked about Brahman last week and we're going to go quickly recap him and then we'll introduce you to these new character, uh, these new gods, which are Shiva and Vishnu. And then we've got the last one, which is I know and can name other Hindu gods and goddesses. Now, a goddess is the female version of God. So we have some questions. OK, I put these questions up already so you know what you're looking for. And I've also put questions at certain parts of the flip just to help you. So as you know, that once we once um, you finish watching the video, there will be a quiz at the end of the session. I put these questions here already just so you know what to keep your eye out for. So first question is Hindus believe in many 
gods or goddesses, true or false? Well, I think if you've been listening carefully, you will know the answer to that. Which god, uh, which god do Hindus believe is most important? Okay, and this one is very important because you're going to have to type in the word in for me. You must make sure that you spell it correctly using the flip, using the flip chart in the video, because if you spell the word incorrectly, it will say that you're wrong. OK, so do make sure that your spellings are correct. Brahman is, uh, is believed to be the last person made or the first person made. Who is the god or goddess of wisdom? Ganesh has the head of a blank. OK, so you've got lots of questions there. So make sure you keep an ear out for those questions that you're going to be hearing and you might be seeing throughout the video. So last week we had a look through the, uh, not last week, the last time you had this RE lesson, we had a look at the different Hindu gods. So we know Hinduism is a polytheistic religion. That means that they believe that there is more than one god. Different gods have different roles and there are over 33 million gods in Hinduism. Now we had a look at some of the gods last week. We had a look at Ganesh, who is the god of beginnings. We had a look at Shiva, who is the destroyer. And we had a look at, uh, at Saroshti, which is the goddess of knowledge, art and music. And we're going to have a bit more. We're going to look into these different gods and see what they do and why they're so important to Hindus. So we have Brahman. OK, now Brahman, the Hindus believe that he is a part of every single god. All gods are connected to him. All gods are a part of Brahman, which is a bit of a complicated thing to think of. So even though Hindus believe in many different gods, they believe that all these gods, so like Ganesh, Shiva and Sarawashti, are a part of him. And he is a part of all of them as well. And it's a bit of a confusing thing to, to, to understand. So Hindus believe in many gods, but the main god is Brahman. And he is made up of all the gods that they believe in. So which god do, uh, which god do Hindus believe is the most important? Well, here's your answer here, Brahman, because all the gods are made up of him and he is made up of them. So there's your answer there. Make sure when you type in this in that you spell it correctly how I've spelled it on here so you can get it correctly. So we've got a little bit of fact here. So Brahman is a four-faced uh, creator god. Now, I think the last time I said this, we said he only had three faces. Now, actually, that was wrong. He actually has four faces. And it's believed that he is the first living being. Hindus believe that he was the first thing to ever be alive. He was the creator. He was the person who made the world how it is. So you got your question here. Brahman is believed to be the last person or the first person made. Choose wisely. So like I was saying before, Hindus believe that he is the most important god he is part of all the god, other gods that are in the Hindu religion. So let's move on to the next one. So we've got Vishnu. Can you say that? Vishnu. Now, Vishnu is the god responsible for preserving and protecting the universe. So the universe is where we live, the world, the stars, the, the planets. And protecting it, preserving, protecting means just to keep it safe. His role is to return to earth during troubled times to restore balance between good and evil. So he's the person that makes sure that the world is how it's supposed to be, that there's not enough, there's not too much evil and there's not too much good either, that there's a perfect balance between the worlds. His reincarnation, so remember reincarnation is when you come back, when you are born, you live and you die and then you're reborn. It's including Rama and Krishna. Now, they're also gods as well in the Hindu religion. I'm not looking at them today, 
but they are important people in the Hindu religion. His last reincarnation is to be the, the, the Shudradha Gumta, otherwise known as Buddha, okay, the founder of Buddhism. Now, we've talked about this, haven't we? So Buddhism is also a religion that originates from India. And Hindus believe that Vishnu is also Buddha. But Buddhists don't believe that either. So it's a bit of a funny one. It's just what Hindus believe. And he has a wife called Lakshmi. And we'll be finding out a bit more about Lakshmi later on. So here we have Shiva. So we talked about Shiva. So remember, the three main gods are the main god, Brahman. And the two other important ones were Vishnu, so the protector. And we have Shiva. And Shiva is the god, is the destroyer of the universe so that new life can come again. Now, it sounds like a bad thing, but actually all it's saying is that in order for new things to happen, things have to die. So for new things to happen, that's what, that, that's what it's trying to say. He restores the balance between good and evil. So similar to Vishnu. So these two, Vishnu and Shiva, work together for making sure that the, that the, enough good and evil in the world and this third bit is, is the third god in the hindu trimurti that basically means that the three main gods brahman so back to brahman vishnu and shiva are believed to be the important gods but the most important is brahman as he was the first living thing okay Let's go on to the next god here. So we've got Ganesh. Now we've seen Ganesh be before earlier. So we know Ganesh is the god of beginnings. So Ganesh is an elephant-headed god. And you can see he's got a head of an elephant and the lord of all living things. He's a god who helps people overcome their problems by granting them wisdom and strength. It is said that the god Shiva cut off his head and restored him to life by giving him the head of an elephant. So Shiva, remember this guy here? So remember, he's the god, he's the destroyer, isn't he? And what happened in a big story between Ganesh and Shiva, maybe one day we can go into that, um, the story of Ganesh and how he uh, had his head chopped off. It's quite an interesting story, actually. Um, and that the person who did that was Shiva. So he cut off his head, he had a normal head before, but then as repayment, he put on an elephant head. And he's quite important God in the Hindu religion. So he is the God of granting wisdom and strength. So we've got this question here. So Ganesh has the head of a tiger, monkey or elephant. Well, I think it's pretty obvious to see what Ganesh has the head of. So let's move on to the next one. So we've got Lakshmi. Now, if you remember earlier, Lakshmi is the wife of Vishnu. Now, Vishnu was the protector god, wasn't he? And he is married to Lakshmi. So Lakshmi is the wife of Vishnu and travels on a lotus flower. Now, a lotus flower, point there, is a type of flower that's mainly grown in India. And she is the goddess of wealth and success. Now, wealth basically means money. If you can see, she's got lots of money coming out of her hand. So if Hindus want to wish for riches or wealth, they would pray to Lakshmi and for success. Success means we're doing well in life. So if you, uh, you might pray to uh, Lakshmi if you've got an important test or a spelling test and you want to do well, you would pray to Lakshmi and she would hopefully grant your wish, your prayer. So, Moving on to the next one. So here we've got Sharawashti. So we've heard of her before. Now she is believed to be the wife of Brahman. So remember, Brahman is the big important god. Okay. And she is important uh, because she is the goddess. So she's a woman, a female of learning and wisdom. So you might have heard earlier, Ganesh is also a part of. Um, is a god of wisdom as well, but the most important one is Sharawashti. 
and she plays a flute. Now, this is a flute in her hand here. It's like a big, big guitar. And she is the main god who Hindus would pray for if they wanted um, you know, the pray prayers of learning and wisdom. So who is the god or goddess of wisdom? You would put Sharawashti. Make sure that you spell this correctly. So again, if you spell it incorrectly, it will say it is wrong. So just be careful with your spellings. So we just had a quick whistle stop tour of our uh, RE. I have also put on assignments of a, an extra task. So please make sure that you do your quiz. This is optional, but I also think it's quite a nice task for you to do. Um, if you don't have a printer, don't worry. You can easily just do this at home. You're going to design your own Hindu God. So you're going to draw it for me and tell me what power your God or Goddess has and an interesting fact. So you might want to say, maybe give him an, uh, or her a, um, a type of animal head. What would they be in charge of? Would they be a Goddess of health or well-being? Would it be something to do with education, of sport, something like that, strength of, you know, anything that you could want it to be? and tell me any interesting facts about who you decide to make. So that's also gonna be on Teams. If you need any other questions uh, to answer these, do make sure that you have a look at the flip again, okay? And I will see you again on Monday. So I'll see you then, bye.